Chapter 1. Make this not only a hunt for a job, but a hunt for a better life. Most people are on the verge of giving up on job hunting. To some, the idea of repeatedly trying to get a job is currently affecting their self-esteem. People keep asking themselves questions like, what am I doing wrong? Is it that I don't have the required skills? Or why is no one employing me after staying at home for years? It's okay to ask these questions and be frustrated, but you can't remain like that when there is a way out. The best way to get the job of your dreams is to first understand yourself. This book will guide you through your current state to how you can get the job of your dreams. It will help you know what you have been doing wrong and how to go about getting it right. According to Bowles, a job hunter went from using the parachute approach to getting a dream job in six months. The job hunter knew where he wanted to work, a company he had had some meetings about two years ago. He then reached out to the CEO of the company on LinkedIn. He asked if the CEO would be up for a short meeting and promised it would be fun. The CEO agreed and the job hunter pitched the idea of setting up a training academy for the organization. About a month later, the job hunter received an email from the organization saying that they wanted to provide the training as the job hunter pitched it. The organization never conceived of the job position they were offering to the job hunter. The job hunter was the one that saw a need in the organization and approached them, and the position met all the criteria of the job hunter. That's the power of the parachute approach. It opens your eyes to the many possibilities that exist and pushes you to harness them. It doesn't matter if you're in the job market for a new job or you're a college student looking to be more knowledgeable about job hunting. This summary is sure to increase your knowledge and teach you all the tricks you need to get your dream job. Chapter 2. It is possible to be job hunting without knowing that the rules have changed. The world of work has changed since the great renaissance of 2008. Employers don't stay the same. They change their behaviors when looking for employees based on good or bad times. But job hunters tend to hunt the same way all the time, regardless of whether the times are good or bad. Job hunters now spend more time looking for jobs, and when they eventually get a job, the jobs don't last. Learning new skills will give you better opportunities to get your dream job. There are changes in the way jobs are done nowadays. In the future, jobs will be a partnership between people and machines. Hence, job hunters need to learn new skills to survive. Job hunting has moved online. Job boards, social media platforms, and other sites are useful to job hunters or career changers for job hunts. Increasingly, job hunters and employers speak two different languages. For example, job hunters want the job market to be a hiring game, but the employer regards it as an elimination game. Although the previous ways we hunt for jobs have become ineffective, there is hope. In today's world, the person who gets hired is not necessarily the one who can do the job best but the one who knows the most about how to get hired. If you have tried as hard as you can to find a job and nothing is working, stop looking for explanations. Switch approaches. Richard Bowles There are two major ways to go about job hunting or a career change. Traditional approach, parachute approach. The traditional approach starts with the job market, looking at the ad postings by employers, approaching those companies that look interesting to you, and waiting to see if you get any responses. Also, this approach requires you to post your resume or send out lots of resumes to mailing lists. In the parachute approach, however, you begin with yourself, not the job market. Get a clearer picture of who you are and a good knowledge of the skill you love to use the most. Then, you need to look for organizations that match your interests. Don't wait until they announce they have a vacancy. Instead, approach them. Don't rely on your resume alone, but find someone who knows you and also knows them. Did you know, almost two-thirds of American households earn less money today than they did in 2002. Chapter 3. Who am I? is the most important question all job hunters should ask themselves. A firm understanding of self helps you identify as a person with multiple skills and experiences instead of a person with only one job title. It also improves your decision-making processes and enables you to accurately describe to employers exactly what is unique about you. When you know what you're capable of, you'll know what you bring to the table and see a new career or direction to take in life. Knowledge of self helps to describe in specific detail what you're looking for. A self-inventory is a questionnaire on how you see yourself. It makes you approach friends and family, not with, uh, I'm out of work, let me know if you hear anything, but with a much more exact description of what kind of anything and in what work setting. A self-inventory relates to thinking and assessing. 
with its demand that you do an inventory of who you are and what you'd love to do before you set on your search for work. The parachute approach helps you take advantage of the opportunity that any interruption presents. The self-inventory begins by dropping the vocational answer to the question, who am I? Instead of saying, I'm an accountant or a lawyer, you must think instead, I'm a person who has had these experiences, or I'm a person who is skilled at. Afterward, make a list of every significant thing you know about yourself on one sheet of paper. This is what Bowles calls the flower exercise or diagram. The next step is to add pictures or graphics to your list. Arrange the items on a sheet of paper in order of priority. Bowles' flower diagram has seven petals. People, workplace, skills, purpose in life, knowledge, salary, and geography. The flower diagram describes who you are in all seven ways. It is a picture of who you most fully are and a job that would most completely match and fulfill all that you are. Chapter 4. Handling Difficulties in Recognizing Your Dream Job After Using the Flower Diagram Job hunters or career changers need to find out what careers their flower points to. Look at your completed flower diagram and choose the top three of your favorite fields of interest in their order of importance. Then, choose your top five favorite transferable skills and write them down. Show them to a few people you know, such as friends, family members, or professionals. Ask them what jobs your fields of interest and skills suggest to them. Write down their suggestions. Afterward, look at what you have written. If you see some useful suggestions, note them and explore them. Always keep in mind your dream. Get as close to it as you can. Then be patient. You never know what doors will open up. Age is not a barrier to finding your dream job. Consider the story of a 65-year-old retired man who had been a senior executive with a publishing company but became bored with retirement. The man contacted his business acquaintance who told him there was no opening that matches or requires his abilities and all his organization needed was someone in their mailroom. The 65-year-old man took the job and over the years he became a senior executive in that organization where he used his skills for 20 years and retired again at 85. Ladies try on different outfits before choosing the ones to buy. Likewise, job hunters or career changers need to try on jobs before deciding which one to pursue. If you're looking for a job, you should talk to people who are already doing the kind of job you are thinking about. Find out what kind of organizations have such jobs, the names of the places that interest them, and lastly, learn as much as you can about a place before formally approaching them. Chapter 5. Stop Prioritizing Your Resume. Prioritize Your Online Presence. Before the emergence of the internet, the only way an employer could learn much about you was from a piece of paper called a resume or CV. The paper contains a summary of where you've been and all you've done in the past. From the piece of paper, the employer is supposed to guess what kind of person you are in the present and what kind of employee you would be in the future. Today, Google is the new resume. All any prospective employer has to do is Google your name and every aspect of you may be revealed. A survey was conducted by the Harris Poll for Career Builder in 2018. It showed that about 47% of employers revealed that if they can't find a social media presence for someone, they won't bring them in for an interview. 44% of the time, an employer will offer someone a job because they like what Google revealed about them. Google shows the creativity or the professionalism they demonstrate online, their ability to express themselves well online, evidence that they communicate well with others, and the wide range of interests they exhibit. Edit, fill in, expand, and add information to your new Google resume. Think of the impression you want an employer to have about you when you are considered for a job. Afterwards, search for your name on Google and read over everything the search engine reveals about you. Then, remove anything you posted on your social media platforms that contradicts the impression you would like to make. Fill out your profiles completely on your social media platforms. Check your spellings and be sure to update your profile regularly. Expand your presence on the internet and add your resume on the internet where Google will find it as well as sending it to an interested employer. Chapter 6. There are a few important conversation tips all job hunters should know. Go for an interview prepared because employers are first cautious about what you know about them rather than knowing about you. Take time out to find out everything about the organization via Google, check their website, and read all press releases. Honor agreements. If you ask for an interview with an employer, be specific with how much time you are asking of them and keep to the time. Don't begin an interview by marketing yourself. Know that the interview is a data collecting process for the employer where they are trying to find out if they like you, if they want you to work with them, if you have the skills they really need, etc. 
Hence, it should also be a data collecting process for you too, where you determine if you like the employer or the team if you really want to work in that company or not. Do a lot of research on organizations before you go in because organizations love to be loved. Richard Bowles Always observe the 50-50 rule. The interview process should be a mix of speaking with listening 50-50. Do not speak for less than 20 seconds and not more than 2 minutes at a time when answering questions. Your appearance and personal habits, nervous mannerisms, self-confidence, the careful thought you show to other people, and your values are the small things that are killers in an interview. Think of ways to bring proof of your skills to the interview. For example, if you are an artist or a craft person, bring a sample of what you have made in a scrapbook, portfolio form, on a flash drive, on YouTube, in photos, and so on. Do not speak evil of your previous employer or employers during the interview. After the interview process, find out the timeline for the process and stay in touch about your continued interest. Always write a thank you note to your interviewers the same evening as the interview and mail it at the latest by the next morning. Don't fall into the trap of making the interview process a monologue. Chapter 7. It is not advisable to accept any job offer when you have not discussed the salary. A high school graduate was excited about getting her first job. Bowles asked her about her salary, which startled her because she didn't know and she never asked. She had assumed they would pay her well. It turned out that her first salary was very low, and thus she learned painfully from that experience. Allow the employer to initiate salary figures so it leaves you in a good position to negotiate better. Salary negotiation should be done when the salary is not clearly stated and there's no indication that it is not negotiable. The aim of salary negotiation is to uncover the most that an employer is willing to pay to get you. Prior to an interview, carefully research typical salaries for your field and in that organization. Do not discuss salary until the end of the interview when you are sure that the organization wants you. Do not be the first one to mention salary figures. Research the salary range that the employer has in mind and then define an interrelated range for yourself relative to the employer's range. For example, if the person who would be below you makes $75,000 and the person who would be above you makes $85,000, the range for your job would be $77,000 to $83,000. Always bring the salary negotiation to a close. Don't leave it hanging. Before you accept a job offer, always ask about the salary and then negotiate. Richard Bowles Chapter 8. Employer Bias and a Shy Job Hunter Makes Job Hunting Challenging Generalizing about employers isn't the best for job hunters. There are two categories of employers, those who want to hire you for what you can do and those who are bothered by what you can't do. No matter the setbacks, ensure you don't give up until you find employers that will only look at what you can do. As a job hunter, be aware of potential negative biases such as race, religious, or sexual identity stereotypes. Age, education, ex-offenders, returning veterans, etc. some employers make about you and address them as needed. If this happens, learn to focus on your strengths and skills throughout the process. If the employer turns you down, don't be discouraged. Opportunities to find deeper powers within ourselves come when life seems most challenging. Joseph Campbell A common problem with most job hunters is that they are shy in dealing with all the social interactions that come up during job hunting. John Crystal, whose groundbreaking work as a career counselor provided much of the basis for the parachute approach, suggests that the best way to deal with shyness is through enthusiasm. For example, if you're talking to someone and you are enthusiastic about the topic under discussion, you'll forget that you are shy in your excitement. Don't go about your job hunting like a job beggar. Go standing tall to offer yourself as a helpful resource for the employer. Every job hunter has issues that might hurt their chances of being hired. As long as these issues don't keep you from doing the particular job that you desire, let your focus be on your skills and abilities. If you're living with a disability, learn to accommodate it by, first of all, making sure you have received the best medical advice and treatments. Look on the internet for any professional association that deals with your disability. Get in touch with them. If you can't get a job because of your disability, search for jobs similar to the one you want to do. Chapter 9 you can always decide to change careers or become your own boss. The internet is a great place to seek direction on how to choose or change a career. Onet Online is an example of an online platform where job hunters can get current information about careers. 
Assessments are instruments which can be gotten online, in books, in the offices of vocational psychologists. Career coaches can also help in choosing a new career. Other ways of choosing or changing your career are using the flower exercise and finding out what the job market needs. Write, read, explore, and get feedback before you become your own boss. It takes a lot of bravery to try anything new, and where to start from can be a very big issue. The best way to go about this is by writing, reading, exploring, and getting feedback. Start with getting a clearer picture of yourself before deciding on what you want to do. Write down any ideas on a paper. Then, write your resume, read it over, and see if anything there gives you an idea for starting your own business. Afterward, read about the advantages and disadvantages of running your own business. Explore by interviewing others who have started the same kind of business in order to avoid making the same mistakes they made. Lastly, take seriously the feedback you received when speaking to other business owners. Examine the negative feedback you received and decided if they apply to you. I was told many years ago by my grandmother who raised me, if somebody puts you on a road and you don't feel comfortable on it, and you look ahead and you don't like the destination, and you look behind and you don't want to return to that place, step off the road. Maya Angelou